Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, what is going on, everyone? I want to welcome you all to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're going to take a look at some common fitness or nutrition idea, look at where that idea came from, and then figure out whether it's true or false based on the most recent scientific evidence. So this week, we're going to be looking at the idea that cryotherapy improves recovery from training. And just to be clear, we're going to be using cryotherapy in its etymological context, which derives from the Greek cryo, meaning cold, and therapeia, meaning to cure. Um, so basically any form of therapy that involves cold treatment. And just to differentiate here, modern whole body cryotherapy is when you just sit in a really cold room set at negative 100 to about negative 200 degrees Celsius for three or four minutes. And a related form of cryotherapy is cold water immersion therapy, which is when you just sit in a cold water bath for 10 minutes or so. Um, so these are both technically cryotherapies. Um, however, when people use the term cryotherapy, they're usually referring to whole body cryotherapy, where you'll sit in a chamber or some cold room. Uh, but regardless, we're gonna cover both of these. So first, where did the idea that these cryotherapy treatments uh, can improve recovery come from? Well, it probably dates back to at least 2500 BC when ancient Egyptians would use cold compression treatments for wounds and inflamed injuries. And there's also a record of Napoleon's surgeon using extreme cold as an anesthetic in the late 1700s. And through the 19th and 20th centuries, cold treatments remained popular in medical practice with applications and treatments of headaches, neuralgia, and specific cancers. However, it wasn't until 2002 that ice baths became all the hype in sports circles when English long-distance runner Paula Radcliffe attributed her gold medal in the 2002 European Championships to ice treatment. And she claimed that it's absolute agony, and I dread it, but it allows my body to recover so much more quickly. And then the mainstream popularity of the more modern whole-body cryotherapy is even more recent than that. Although the first cryotherapy chamber was built in Japan in the late 1970s, it's only been widely available in the United States for the last decade or so. And since then, it's really just blown up in mainstream fitness circles. Uh, but I think that the real question is, is all of that hype justified? And I think in order to answer that question, we need to have a look at what the scientific evidence has to say. Now, I actually covered this study in another video, uh, but very quickly, a 2016 study comparing the recovery effects of whole body cryotherapy and cold water immersion therapy in 10 subjects after performing five sets of 15 reps on the leg curl found that at 0, 24, 48, and 72 hours after training, cold water immersion was better at improving recovery than whole body cryotherapy. And that was measured by muscle soreness, counter movement jump height, and creatine kinase levels, which is a marker for muscle damage. And while whole body cryotherapy is a newer methodology, all of the research that we currently have comparing it to cold water immersion basically shows it to be worse, including a 2013 meta-analysis comparing the two. Um, so cold water immersion definitely seems to be better than whole body cryotherapy, um, but for all that, is it actually worth doing still? Um, so I'd like to first look at its effect on muscle soreness and a very comprehensive 2015 system systematic review and meta-analysis looking at 36 articles found that overall cooling treatments did significantly lower the symptoms of delayed onset muscle soreness at the 24 hour mark compared to the control condition, which basically just involves sitting or standing in a room set at a comfortable temperature. And this soreness reduction continued for up to 96 hours in all of the studies included that looked at that. However, muscle soreness may not be the best gauge of recovery, especially given how subjective its measurement is. And the authors noted that cooling didn't affect objective recovery variables such as lactate levels, creatine kinase levels, or interleukin-6 levels. Um, I think there are also a number of other limitations with this research. Um, probably a main one is that it's virtually impossible to blind the subjects in this case, um, so they're fully aware of whether they're in the treatment group that's getting the ice bath or the control group that isn't getting the ice bath, and I think that that leaves them very susceptible to the placebo effect. And it could very well be the case that since there is such a widespread belief that this cold treatment therapy is effective at reducing soreness, that could sort of be playing into the subjective reports of these subjects in terms of their own perceived levels of muscle soreness after training and then in the days after the, the ice bath. And of course, I think all that we think we know uh, from this present analysis 
is that some sort of cryotherapy seems to be better than just sitting there or basically doing nothing um, at reducing delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, however, that doesn't speak to how it might stack up against other recovery modalities, um, such as doing a 10-minute post-workout cool-down. And in fact, a recent issue of the Mass Research Review highlights some newer research showing that cold water immersion therapy doesn't improve recovery better than a simple 10-minute low-intensity bout of cycle. Now, some people may note the time-tested efficacy of cold or ice-based treatments at reducing inflammation. And while this has been shown to be effective in animal models, especially following following injury. A 2017 study in the Journal of Physiology notes that no research has examined whether cold water immersion reduces local inflammation in human skeletal muscle after resistance training. And it also points out that the repair of skeletal muscle tissue following injury is complex and involves interactions of a ton of different mediators and pathways, and it's not even clear that reducing inflammation is the best way to recover from exercise. In fact, some research shows that reducing inflammation in muscle after injury often impedes muscle repair. And while their overall conclusion had a very skeptical tone, the authors do acknowledge that less muscle soreness after intense exercise may be the most consistent effect of cold water immersion. Uh, but still, as of 2017, the mechanisms through which cold water immersion reduces soreness is still unknown, uh, but it may have something to do with nociceptor or pain receptor activity. And I think it's worth pointing out here that delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS are probably not caused by inflammation. And this is a common misconception. And I think it's led a lot of people to seek out treatments that reduce inflammation as a way of reducing delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, so things like anti-inflammatory medications or ice treatments. But it stands to reason that even if these treatments did reduce inflammation locally in muscle, uh, that doesn't imply that it'll actually effectively reduce muscle soreness. Um, but with that out of the way, um, it does really seem to be the case that certain cryotherapies do reduce muscle soreness after training. But for all that, it may not be linked to their reduction in inflammation, which I don't think they've been strongly shown to do. And even still, this potential reduction in soreness may come at a cost. In 2015, Roberts and colleagues split 21 trained men into two groups. Both groups trained lower body only twice per week for 12 weeks, but one group underwent 10 minutes of cold water immersion after every training session, and the other group did 10 minutes of low intensity cycling after every session. And after the 12 weeks, the simple cycling group saw improved muscle mass mass and improved strength more so than the cold water group for every measure that they tested. And in a follow-up study, the same research group determined that the muscular and performance detriments from the cold water therapy was likely due to a dampened anabolic signal and from decreased satellite cell activity. And the authors concluded that the present findings contribute to an emerging theme that cold water immersion and other strategies that are intended to mitigate and improve resilience to physiological stress associated with exercise may actually be counterproductive to muscle adaptation. Okay, so in conclusion, I would say that cryotherapies, including whole body cryotherapy and cold water immersion, improve recovery from training is pretty much busted. It does seem to be the case that some of these cryotherapies do reduce muscle soreness uh, following training. Um, however, all of the other measurements of recovery uh, don't seem to be too much in favor of the cryotherapy camp. And in fact, they may come at quite a cost when it comes to muscle hypertrophy and performance adaptations. Um, it does seem to be the case that they might reduce muscle soreness in the days following training. Um, however, I think there are methodological flaws with that body of research. And I would also point out that there are other recovery modalities, um, things like just having a simple 10 minute cool down on the bike following training um, or doing some foam rolling uh, may also be an easy way to sort of reduce that muscle soreness. And in my opinion, it might be a cheaper and perhaps more bearable way to reduce soreness than dunking yourself in a, a tub of cold water <laughs> after training. Um, furthermore, whole body cryotherapy uh, seems to be worse than cold water immersion therapy. Um, so if you're gonna pick between one or the other, uh, the ice bath is probably the way to go. Um, however, it isn't perfectly clear that even the ice bath is really any better than just doing a simple 10 minute cool down. And in fact, these cryotherapies may be coming at a cost as some of the more recent literature has shown that it may not be that great in terms of muscle hypertrophy and strength performance. It may actually dampen some of the anabolic signals associated with training. Um, so all things considered and bringing this full circle, I would say that there does seem to be more of a potential cost than a potential benefit when it comes to these recovery treatment modalities. Um, especially when there are other options available that seem to be just as effective. So 
use it at your own discretion is what I would say. So that's gonna conclude this one, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, before we go, I have to thank Squarespace for sponsoring another Myth Bus Monday. Uh, I really do appreciate their support on the channel and in particular with this series. Um, if you guys aren't aware, Squarespace is the website creator platform that I've been using to run my own website and my own online store uh, for several years now, actually, and I find it to be a great service. Um, they have amazing customer support uh, that's always there to help you out if you run into any issues, and they have beautiful designer custom templates. Uh, there's just a huge range uh, of selections to choose from, um, and they're all very modern, sleek looking, uh, and very aesthetic. Um, so if you guys would like to get started with your own website or running your own online store, uh, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered, and that will save you 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again, guys, so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will see you guys all here next Monday.